myself with two guns in the lips. So when they follow me, I jump out in the club with two sticks. And Hey yo, LAZ, make sure you check out that new single from Royal Flush featuring L Saucy. It's called Right There, you heard? And the link is in the comment section and in the description of this video. You heard? Leave a comment, tell them Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man sent you. Look for this single on Apple Music and all streaming platforms. And yo, make sure you go to InSource TV on YouTube and subscribe today. Watch that Super Trife Low Life's interview part two out now a minute later he comes back through with his man they come back through and he stands in front of me because i'm sitting right next to where the door opens up he like yo what's up you got a problem with me so i'm like huh LAZ, I'm in Times Square. I had to go down the side block because it's too noisy. I won't be able to film nothing. But anyway, you know, we done spoke about the movie Juice on this channel a couple of times. And there's a couple of stories on the channel. We started breaking down the psychological effects the movie Juice had on New York City. You heard? Because make no mistake about it, the movie Juice had a lot of people losing their minds in NYC, and I was one of them. And now that I'm a grown ass man, I look back and think, I already had an interest in guns and stuff, but the movie Juice made me start obsessing over guns. That's a whole fact, you heard? So, firstly, you know, I'm gonna change some names. I told this story before on live. I told this story before on live. I don't even remember which live it was where I told the story at. So, you know. And the other day, you know, a gen pop bro hit me up asking me where the story was at. And I couldn't even tell him because I don't remember which live it was. You heard? So, by popular demand, I'm just gonna tell the story. But, and I'm gonna change some names in the story because, you know, some of the events in the story, I'm not proud of. I'm a grown ass man now. Now I mean, I don't, I ain't a bully. You'll understand when I finish telling the story. But, um, yeah, the movie Juice was coming out, right? Now at this time, you know, I was already a Pac fan. I was a Pac fan since I first, I heard Brenda's got a baby. I heard Holla if you hear me. They was dope. But what really won me over as a fan was trapped. Tupac song, they got me trapped in this prison of seclusion. Cause you know, at that time, used and damaged was popping in New York. That's what everybody was wearing, used and damaged. So when I seen Pac, a West Coast dude, who I thought was just a straight, you know, um, Oakland dude at the time, when I seen him with a whole used suit on, I was like, nah, this nigga, a New York nigga, like, I fucks with this nigga. You heard? So, um, like I said, Brenda's Got a Baby was already a blazer and shit like that. And I like Pac. You know, Hollis, you hear me, was a little too militant for me at the time. I wasn't on no militant shit like that at that time. But um, when Trap came out, Trap was different, bro. Trap was crazy. You feel what I'm saying? They got me trapped in this prison of seclusion. Happiness living on the street is a delusion. Yo, it was just a fire-ass song. The beat was fire, the hook was fire. Everything about it was dope, loved it. And I became a Super Pac fan after that. You heard? So then, boom. Like I said, 9-2 hits around. January 17th, 1992. If I, either that shit was on my man birthday or right before his birthday. And we like, yo, we gotta go see that juice. On opening day, opening weekend, I can't remember if we went on opening day or just opening weekend or whatever. But it might have been opening day. That's how bad we was waiting for it to come out, right? 
So like I said, I'm going to change some names in the story because, you know. So check it, right? So juice is coming out. So we like, yeah, we going to see that. So when it dropped, boom. We like, yo, son, we going. First of all, it was sold out everywhere. It was sold out everywhere. Can't remember how we was finding where movie tickets was not sold out at. I think it was a number you could call. I can't remember. You understand what I'm saying? But we found out that it wasn't sold out in Queens. I don't remember the movie theater. If you know what movie theater we could have been going to on the N and R train in Queens back in 9-2, leave a comment and let me know what movie theater you think it was. Might ring a bell if I hear it. But I know the only movie theater we found that it wasn't sold out in was in Queens on that N and R line. So we like, we going, son, we going. You heard? So we was going for like the nine o'clock showing. You heard? Now, for those who don't know, when Juice premiered in theaters in New York, it was a little violence around, the, not just New York, but in the country period, it was a little violence happening in various movie theaters because, you know, Juice a wild ass movie, Pac was a wild ass dude, and Pac was the type of dude that his level of influence, you heard, if Pac was wild, he influenced other people to be wild without even trying. You feel what I'm saying? He was just an influential type of nigga. So we hype, we like, nigga, we going to see Pac. You heard? So, me and my man, I'm just gonna call him Bag. You heard? Shout out to my nigga Bag. Know what I mean? Um, we hop on the train. We like, yo, we going to see that, son. You heard? We go to motherfucking probably Rockaway Avenue on the C train. However we got to the end and the R, we got there and we went out to see the movie Juice. You heard? That shit was crazy in the movie theater. Dudes were screaming every scene. Like the scene when Pac shot Raheem, the whole movie theater screamed, oh my God. All the chicks scream, oh my God. It was a crazy movie, see. They didn't let they didn't let you know with the promo of the movie that no shit like that was gonna happen. So when he killed Raheem in the movie theater, niggas lost their motherfucking mind. Oh shit, yo, this nigga crazy. And then, you know, Pac acting just went crazy from there. The type of shit he was doing as the character Bishop after Raheem was dead and he figured out everybody was against him. The shit was dumb, scary, and deep because we all knew somebody like that. We all knew a bishop in the hood. You feel what I'm saying? Who may flip at the drop of a dime. You feel what I'm saying? So, boom. So we like, yo. So we go see the movie, like I said. The movie theater was rowdy. Wasn't nothing but black young people in there. It was crazy. You heard? So we saw the movie, shit was over. We was hyped. We like, yo, we got to see that shit again. I'm going to get that shit on bootleg. I'm going to go on Belmont. I'm going to go on Pickin' tomorrow, see if I can find that shit on, on, on bootleg. I'm going to go downtown Brooklyn, see if I can find it on bootleg. Like, we was, we was open. You heard? So me and my man get back on the train. We headed back to Brownsville. We on the N or the R train, one of them. You heard? So we sitting, there's a crowded, this is like a Friday night, something crazy like that. Whatever night it was, it was very crowded on the train to be 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. But that's New York City. It'd be 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and the train be packed. You feel me? So we on the train and shit. Now, you know, that N and R line, the Queens, it's a lot of Asian people. I mean like Spanish people like it's not really a line where you see a bunch of rowdy ass thugs and teenagers it's not one of those train lines that's the A and the 3 and the 4 and the you understand what I'm saying but we on the train we talking about the movie we like yo son that shit was crazy son remember how that nigga was like partner yo we was, we was quoting the lines we was hype my nigga we was hype so like I said, Juice had some niggas in New York fucked up. Pac had niggas in New York fucked up. The movie 
was driving people crazy. Like I said, we went on opening night or opening weekend. So we didn't know yet about the craze that this movie was going to cause and how it was going to make some people in the streets of New York actually start acting like Bishop and going crazy. We on the train, we talking. Yeah, son, all of a sudden, the doors open in the car. <laughs> you heard? I see this dude come on the train that I know from my projects. He's not from my projects, but his family lives in my projects. You feel what I'm saying? And I would see this dude on a regular basis in the hood. And me and him never said two words to each other. We ain't had no argument, no problems, no none of that. But when he used to come through, his family lived in the building that me and my mans used to hang out in front of. And you know, we was right, we was, we we wasn't even starting no trouble. We just be deep in front of the building, ratchets and all of that. You heard, this is when we used to be sitting in front of 300, when there was a bench and a table right in front of 300, and we used to sit there, we used to keep a hammer on a daycare roof. You feel what I'm saying? Just for rack. We wasn't out there trying to shoot motherfuckers at that time and shit like that, but we was becoming obsessed with hammers. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, this dude used to always come through to visit his family, but the nigga had kind of a hard bop. You heard he would come through with a hard bop. And we wasn't out there starting no trouble, but I used to, but I used to maybe, maybe feel some type of way. Cause like I said, at the time when this shit happened, I, this shit caught me completely by surprise. Like I said, maybe he used to, he used to get the vibes that niggas wasn't feeling his bop or we used to have ice grills on. It wasn't that serious. We just didn't know that nigga. And you come and stomping through our motherfucking projects anytime you want to. You know how niggas is. So I see this nigga come through the train. Now he sees my man bag. He like this. Yo, bag, what up, my nigga? And he give my man bag a pound. Bang. This is what happened. We first we was on the train. First we was on the train. And we were standing up running our mouths about the movie. Then a couple of seats opened up and I seen a seat in the corner. I went and sat in the corner. My man sat in the row, um, right the, the next row over. So he comes through the door. So now we not even talking no more because we not sitting with each other. Now I mean, this nigga comes through the motherfucking train door. Stay clear, please. He sees my man bag, he like this. Yo, bag, what up? He give he get a nigga a pound. He with another dude. They walking all tough through the train car. So when I see him, I said, oh, this that nigga that be coming through the hood. But you know, I'm not looking at the nigga like this corny nigga or this sucker nigga. I don't, I'm not thinking about him at all. I'm just like, yo, okay, this that nigga that, that be in the hood sometimes. I heard he was from out these parts where we at in Queens somewhere. So so the nigga, the nigga gives my man a pound, then he comes and gives me a pound. But when he gives me a pound, it was kind of hesitant. Like he was like, yo, what's up? What up, what up, nigga? And, he, and I reached my hand out, he gave me a pound, but it's like after he gave me a pound, he, he was kind of looking at me like, and I'm like, you know, I'm sitting down. Now listen, bro. Like I said, at the time, I'm not thinking I got no beef with this nigga, none of that shit. Nigga gives me a pound, I'm like, all right, what's up, bro? In my head, I'm like, you ain't never given me a pound before when we was in the projects ever, so you wanna give me a pound now, but it is what it is. I ain't no sucker nigga, I gave the nigga a pound. So the nigga bounced out the train car, right? I looked at my man, I'm like, yo, that was that nigga, he like, yeah, yeah. So a minute later, this nigga comes back through the train car. He like this. He comes back through with his man. They come back through. And he stands in front of me because I'm sitting right next to where the door opens up. The nigga comes next to me. He like, yo, what's up? You got a problem with me? So I'm like, huh? He like, yo, you got a problem with me? You understand what I'm saying? Like, I said, yo, bro, what? I said, what the fuck is you talking about? He said, yeah, because every time I come through your projects, you always grilling me and shit. You be sitting out there with a bunch of niggas and all of that, like you tough and all of that. So I'm like, what? 
I say, yo, my nigga, real talk. I don't even be fucking thinking about you when you come through the projects, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? I don't even know what the fuck you talking about. So he like, yeah, now you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You be grilling me, da 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 this and that. So I'm like, yo, word the mother, go ahead, my nigga. I'm like, yo, go ahead, my nigga. Go ahead, my nigga. So he like, nah, fuck that. Fuck that. What's up now? What's up now? You be grilling me when you in your projects with your boys and all of that. What's up now? Son, word to everything I love. This was all the movie juice talking, my nigga. I see this nigga eight times a week in my projects. I don't say nothing to him. He don't say nothing to me. We not grilling that nigga. We not saying nothing to that nigga. None of that. We know his uncle. His uncle is a church nigga and he a cool nigga. So we don't fuck with that nigga. You feel what I'm saying? My nigga, Pac had this nigga fucked up. He like, yo, I'm saying, what's up? Oh, wow. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, this nigga just came from seeing Juice, my nigga. This nigga just came from watching that movie in the same movie theater that we was in. You heard? Because where's all of this shit coming from, nigga? So he like, yeah, nigga, so what you want to do now? What you want to do now? So I'm like, oh, what? Yo, bro, listen. The whole train is packed with Asian people and other races, but mostly Asian people, very few blacks. More than anything, I was embarrassed. I'm like, yo, bro. I'm looking at my man, I'm like, are you even my man who knew him better than I knew him was looking at me like, is this nigga out his mind? Does he know that he has to come back to Howard? Son, word the mother, so the nigga like, yeah, so what you want to do? He's screaming on the motherfucking train, making a bishop scene. So what you want to do, Q? What you want to do, Q? You my fucking problem, Q. I'm like, yo, bro, real talk. I said, so all right, man. I said, on the next stop, step off the train. We're going to get it on. So the nigga like this. Nah, it ain't start off the it ain't start off the train. It started right here. Nah, it ain't start nowhere, nigga. You just seen a movie and you hype. I said, but fuck all of that. When the train stop, let's get off and me and you can scrap. So he like this. Nah, fuck that. Fuck that, nigga. Blah, blah, blah. Nigga talking all this crazy shit. My man come over there. Yo, chill, chill, bro. Come on. Nah, nah, nah. It's the people's. Nah, 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 nah. So I'm like, whatever, nigga. He like, yeah, nigga. Whatever, nigga. That's right. You know, my name's such and such. My name's such and such. I'm from Queens. I'm like, yo, bro. I said, yo, real talk, my nigga. I said, listen. You know, I told him to suck all type of things and shit. But I said, yo, son, real talk, bro. You better not ever, ever. He was acting like his man was acting like he was holding him back and shit. Like, nah, son, don't hold me back. Fuck this nigga. I hate this nigga. I said, yo, bro, word to my mother, son. You better not ever, ever come your ass back to Howard Projects in Brownsville again, my nigga. I hope your family moved and I just don't know about it. But I better not ever see you in Howard again. He like, yeah, hey, whatever, nigga. You ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna do nothing. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, all right, whatever. We saw that nigga uncle the next day. I told that nigga uncle. I said, yo, word to my mother, son, your nephew, Fronted on me yesterday on the train for no reason, my nigga. Never had two words with this nigga in my life, son. This nigga fronted on me for no fucking reason because he was hyped off that movie. This nigga fronted on me for no fucking reason because he was hyped off that juice shit. I say, when I see that nigga, it's on. He like, yo, man, you know, he a young. I said, man, I don't give a fuck. We was ready to flip on him. You heard? Like, niggas had sclammers. Like, niggas was ready to flip on that nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So I said, all right. So that nigga ain't show up in the projects for months. He ain't come through for months. I'm talking about six months, six, seven months. We used to be looking for this nigga. Like, if I ever see this nigga in this projects, nigga, it's on with this nigga. You heard? So, like I said, six something months go by, something like that. I'm in my crib one day, minding my business. Niggas call my crib phone. I pick up. 
Yo, what up? I can't remember who it was that told me it might have been my nigga bag, but somebody called me and was like, yo, son, guess who in the basketball court right now playing basketball? I said, who? Nigga said, that nigga such and such nephew, my nigga. The nigga who fronted on you in Queens on the train. I said, nah. I said, nah, no way, no way. Nigga said, I'm telling you, son, that big nigga out there right now, I'm telling you, he playing ball by himself. I said, nah, no way. Son, come downstairs, I said, nigga, I got dressed. My whole look on my face while I was getting dressed was like, this nigga actually came back to my housing projects. I said, yo, son, I came out, I came outside. My man's in him was like, son, we gonna fuck this nigga up, son. Word to my mother, son. I'm like, chill. Niggas like, yo, son, I'ma steal off on a nigga. I'ma come up behind him and yoke. I said, nah, nobody do nothing. Nobody do nothing, please. Let me come downstairs. I'm getting dressed. Nigga, my shit came outside. I came out to the, this is nighttime, my nigga. Was it nighttime? Let me think. Nah, it was daytime, it was daytime. You heard? It's daytime, I come outside. I go to the motherfucking, I come in front of 300 and I'm looking into the park, I'm like. Cause I just couldn't believe that this nigga came back to my project. I said. That's that nigga. I said, this nigga done lost his motherfucking rabbit ass mind. Nigga, my shit come on the motherfucking court. And I promise you, hold on. This is the crazy hum digger. You heard? One of my mans, whose name I'm also not going to mention. You understand what I'm saying? But he was like, yo, son, that nigga told me he asked for you. He asked me, yo, what's up with... What's up with Brian? So I said, son, stop playing with me. He said, son, nah, that nigga asked what's up with you. What that was, was he knew his ass was grass and he was trying to make amends early. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga, I wasn't trying to hear none of that, my nigga. You stunned it off on me. You was hyped off juice. You stunned it off on me in front of the whole train, in front of my man, embarrassed me in front of the whole New York City. Nah, nigga. So like I said, I'm not proud of none of this shit. You heard? We was both young for the record. We was both young. We kids. We in Brownsville. You understand what I'm saying? But um, I came outside. I went on to the basketball court. And this nigga was playing basketball. So I'm like, yo. I said, yo, what's up, my nigga? He like, yo, what up? What up? I said, yo. I said, what you doing, my nigga? He was like, yo, I'm just playing some ball. I was like, yo, can I play with you? He like, yeah, let's play. Let's play. Son, my nigga. I let that nigga shoot around a couple of times. I shot around a couple of times. Then I got the ball. I started bouncing the ball. He could tell something is up because niggas is in the projects. Niggas is sprinkled around. Suspiciously sprinkled around. You feel what I'm saying? In the park. And I'm shooting around with the nigga and a couple of my other mans are shooting around with the nigga. So I get the ball. I'm like, yo, bro, remember that time you fronted on me in Queens though? He was like, what? Da, 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 da. Tried to say some bullshit. I wasn't trying to hear nothing the nigga had to say. I just gunned the ball into the nigga face. Like I said, I'm not proud of these things, but I'm just giving you actual history on what took place. I just gunned the ball in the nigga face on some super dodgeball shit like this. And she was like, boom. And she hit the nigga in his face. He like this. Yo, what the fuck? I said, nigga, didn't I tell you? Don't ever, ever come back to Howard Projects, nigga? Didn't I tell you that? The nigga started running. We started chasing the nigga. The nigga ran into the building up to his up to his family crib. Nigga ran into the building, ran into his family crib. Now, first of all, when I hit the dude in the face with the ball, you know how ignorant niggas is. Once I set it off, boom, the niggas got involved that I barely even fucked with. Niggas like, yo, son, what happened, son? What up? That nigga fronty? Niggas just start swinging on that nigga. Niggas ain't had nothing to do with nothing. Niggas just see a Howard nigga steal off on a nigga who's not from the peas. Niggas started running over there. Yo, son, what happened, son? Ugh. You heard? My nigga Charles, man. 
dark skin Charles with the big lips. That nigga Charles motherfucking, that nigga had a 38 Bulldog BB gun that that nigga was running around Brownsville robbing all type of people with. That shit looked as real as a motherfucker, but it was a BB gun. But if you ain't know, that shit looked it like exactly like a real 38 Bulldog. So that nigga like, yo, I got the BB gun, son. Let's, let's, let's front like we about to clap that nigga. You heard? So my nigga Charles, he backs out the 38 BB gun. He like, yo, what's up, nigga? You fronted on my man? You fronted on my man? So now the nigga think niggas is going to shoot him. That's when he started running. And he ran to the building and ran up in the motherfucking building with his people. So now we outside. We like, nigga, you got to come back out. You feel what I'm saying? You got to come back out. We ain't going no motherfucking way, nigga. You heard? So now his uncle comes downstairs. Yo, what's up, man? Niggas from the... I said, yo, bro, yo, your fucking nephew knew what the fuck he did on that train, my nigga. Niggas was minding their motherfucking business. That nigga pulled the bishop move on me on the motherfucking train, stunned it off in front of everybody like this ain't my motherfucking projects. And now you coming back to my motherfucking projects? I said, nah, nigga. Fuck that. I don't care what you got to say, nigga. That nigga getting up out of here, and he be, and that nigga's banned from this project for the rest of eternity, nigga. Nigga can't come out here, nigga. So, that's my worst foul, because that nigga went home, that nigga family did not come outside with that nigga to walk that nigga back to the train station. Nigga's like, yo, listen, bro, you causing problems? We gotta live here? We can't get involved in this shit but so much. You understand what I'm saying? Which was dumb, nigga. You know we know your family. We know you come here to see your family. Why is you starting problems with niggas that live in the projects of where your family live at? You feel what I'm saying? So the nigga ended. We stood out there for like a half hour waiting for that nigga to come. He finally came outside. And when he came outside, we ain't OD smashed the nigga out crazy. We just chased that nigga back to the train station. And niggas was violating, kicking that nigga in his back, hitting him with bottles. We we wowed out on that nigga. My man is a foul nigga. My man was still acting like he was cool with the nigga. He like, yo, son, chill, son. Chill, leave son alone. Ooh. You heard? Acting like it was us that was snuffing him, but it was him. He like, son, come on, son, chill. I know his family, man. Chill. The nigga turned his back. My man just kicked the nigga in his back. Yo, chill, chill. I'm like, yo, this nigga's foul. You heard? But, um... Like I said, we ain't do something dirty. Niggas could have did something dirty. We was three, four deep, chasing him all the way back to Atlantic Avenue L train. We could have did something officially. We could have seriously did something dirty, but we didn't. You understand? We just chased the nigga back to the train station and let him know that he couldn't come back to the projects ever again. You feel what I'm saying? And now that I'm a grown ass man, I look back at that shit, silly little kid shit, even though he started it, you know, nowadays, I might shrug off some shit like that. I will shrug off some shit like that nowadays because I know that the nigga pulled the clown move and the nigga was letting the TV gas him up or the movie gas him up. You feel me? But um, I also was in a situation where I told that nigga he better not never come to my projects and I told a story to everybody in my projects that I fucked with what had happened. So if that nigga would have came back to the projects and I ain't do shit, I would have been looking real crazy after the way I talked about that dude. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, shit was fucked up, but like I said, the movie Juice had that nigga fucked up and had a lot of New Yorkers fucked up and acting crazy out here. And I was one of them because after that, later on in that year, I ended up catching my case in October. You feel what I'm saying? And I was obsessed with guns running around wanted to to a point where my nigga pressure pressure I'll tell you this my nigga pressure niggas used to be calling me bishop you understand what i'm saying yo chill bishop because that niggas used to say i used to act crazy when i get a gun in my hand you heard and he's like come on this nigga bishop man chill you heard but um that 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 movie really did have an effect on niggas minds and in reality you got to be real careful what you let your kids watch even teenagers because sometimes the movies be poison. Not saying Juice was a powerful, good movie, but teenagers, we don't know how to see nothing in the movie, but the gunplay and the motherfucking craziness. You heard? That's all we get to see. That's all we care about in the movie. So you gotta be careful what you let your kids watch. And even if you let your kids watch it, you gotta explain to them how this is a movie. 
and uh, don't let it influence you. And if you're going to let it influence you, let it influence you to do the right thing and not the wrong thing because the movie actually has some gems in it and some jewels in it. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, man, you heard, I feel bad that we, we jumped that dude and ran him to the train station. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I ain't never had no problem with the nigga. Never said two words to the nigga. Never did nothing to him. Said nothing to him. You heard? And he pulled a whole stunt move on me on the train in front of everybody. You know what I mean? For no reason. Because he wanted to he wanted to Tupac out and juice out after seeing the movie. He chose me to juice out on. You heard? When that movie was already bootlegged and on video cassette, they ain't had that same energy. But um But then you know. Then, you know, months, months went by after that. Three, four months went by after that. And the kid uncle came to me and was like, yo, man, listen. Now, I mean, I know y'all got a problem with my nephew. Y'all don't want him out here. But, you know, one of his family members in my crib, they sick. You feel what I'm saying? And, you know, he need to see his peoples while they still here. You heard? And at first I was like, man, I don't give a fuck. Know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. That nigga can't be out here. Then I thought about that shit, slept on it. I was like, nah, I can't do that. You heard? And I went and I seen a nigga and I said, yo, man, tell your nephew he could come out here. It ain't going to be no problems. He like, yo, I got your word, man. I want y'all to say that. Then he come out, niggas try to jump him again. I said, listen, if he's coming out here because your family member is sick and he wants to come out here and, and see them and pay respects and shit like that, then listen, I don't even see him when he comes out. You heard? So the nigga started coming back to the projects. He came and he first came, he was looking. He didn't want to look at niggas, but we ain't even put that energy out. You understand what I'm saying? We left that shit alone. Like, all right, bro, we left that shit alone. Your, your uncle's a good nigga. He wants us to chill. He wants you to chill. You feel what I'm saying? And we left that shit alone. And son came through and we ain't do nothing to the nigga after. After a few months, son was able to come through minding his business and niggas ain't say nothing. And do or do nothing to the nigga and eventually we might have even started saying what up to the nigga you feel what i'm saying but um nigga tried to pick out the light skin nigga her nigga tried to pick out the light skin nigga the front on why you in front of my man not me nigga picked the light skin nigga the front on now nah, my nigga but anyway man z-man suicide polo with the ski man running around the hood like he man you heard get at me Selfish, two guns in the lips, and when they follow me, I jump out in the club with two sticks. Hey, make sure you check out that new single from Royal Flush featuring L Saucy. It's called Right There, you heard? And the link is in the comment section and in the description of this video. You heard? Leave a comment, tell them Z Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man sent you. Look for this single on Apple Music and all streaming platforms.